Is there a car still in front, Ferris? I said, is there a car still in front? Ferris, yeah. Florence was speaking to you. Oh, I'm sorry, Florence. I was just looking at the fireflies. What did you say? I said, can you see if they've left yet? No, I can't really see. It's too dark. <gasps> I wish I was a cat so I could see in the dark. <laughs> Meow. I don't think I'm going to wait for her. I'm going to get a book and go to my room. Does your jaw hurt tonight, Jeff? Not bad. Then stay a little longer. We'd like to have you. Jeff, you already spent 267 minutes worth of waiting. Surely you can add an additional 10 cents worth. <laughs> All right, my statistical friend, I guess my curiosity is good for 10 minutes more. I wonder what she's like. You know, Miss Willie says she's one of the wealthiest families in America. Oh, that's bad. What happens she has an expensive camera she can't work or listens to an artist that I never heard of? Oh, cynic. Has money spoiled? Moi. Uh, do you have money, Ferris? Oh, <laughs> bags. Mm. Let's not be prejudiced about money. Yeah. Some of my best friends are wealthy. Hannibal, play something to distract Jeff. Oh, you catch me tuned. What shall it be? Surprise us. How about Gypsy Sardis? <gasps> no. Do not play gypsy music. Hmm. It frightens me. Frightens you? It terrifies me. When I was a kid, I was kidnapped by gypsies. But I was rescued just as they're going to dye my skin the color of walnut juice. Hmm. Um. Go ahead, Hannibal. Do you think she likes instruments? Oh, I hope she plays an instrument. Oh, the harp. I hope she plays the harp all my life. I'm sorry, Hannibal. Go ahead. Florence. Psst. Psst. Florence. My father, oh, he raised me on the harp. Oh, he played like an angel for me. Go ahead, Hannibal. Jeff, what are you doing? Uh, there's just a book on the shelf that I wanted. I'm sorry, Hannibal. It's fine. Ferris, help Jeff get the book. Wait. I'll get the chair. Never mind, Ferris. I can get it. No, no, no. I'm wearing the khaki pants, thus meaning I will get the chair. <laughs> now, Jeff, could you tell me what book was it again? The Lifespan of the Eight. I give up. People give the strangest books to this library. I can never get into Forbidden Tibet. It's amazing what standing over people does to you. I feel smarter than anyone in the world. Hmm. It's the yellow one. Oh, Jeff, I know. Books, they're in my blood. Do you know, my mother actually invented the filing system in the New York City Library. Do you know what they called her? They called her the Queen of Cross Index. <laughs> Jeff, don't worry. I'll get your book. No, no, no. Musicians shouldn't work. You stay right there, buddy. Oh, be careful, Ferris. Don't get dust into your eyes. Jeff, can you read Animal Husbandry? I can actually reach that one. No, this time it's got to be the lifespan of the ape. No. Just goose it out with this. Oh, Hannibal, you have such sweet toes. Thank you. All right. Oh, oh come on. That's oh, a the gypsies are coming. Right. Looks like Miss Patty's back. I hate the dark. Oh, thank you. Oh, oh no. 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 Miss Patty. Patty? Miss Patty? No. 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 Miss Please? Ah! 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 Oh. Some night you're going to turn out the lights at the wrong time and hurt someone. Then you'll be sorry. Oh, how I do wish you'd chosen something else to give up for Lent. Yeah, it's unfair to make the rest of us suffer to get you to heaven, Miss Patty. Yeah, Miss Patty, and other people like electricity. Now stay oh. at your easel, like a good girl, and leave the lights alone. Please, Miss Patty, let us keep the lights on. I must say, Miss Willie, you sure did startle every single okay. one of us. For the love of Pete, Ferris, what are you doing up there? Oh, I was just getting a book for Jeff up there. With a violin bow? Yeah, you see, I couldn't quite reach it, so Hannibal gave me the violin bow to okay, get the book up. Okay, never mind. I did not mean to cause all this commotion, okay? Forget about it. No! I will get you your book, Sergeant. You stay right there. <laughs> We're gonna have to do this the old-fashioned way. Everyone, watch your heads. Timber! <laughs> Jeff, there is your book. Miss Willie, you may take the bow. Hannibal, you may help me down. Oh. All right, here we go. One. Okay, just two, jump. Just jump. Three. There you go. Ferris, the next time you need something from the top shelf, call me. Why, the entire shelf might have fallen on you. Oh, Miss Willie, since when has anyone ever gone hurt by a good book? Enough of them might, darling, and I'd hate for that to happen. 
I hate everything in the world. Oh, but most of all, I hate cold cream, hot dogs, codfish, crawfish, catfish, catnip, she dip, sawdust, subway, sewers, skewers, buttermilk, caterpillars, frictions, fractions, pins, puns, pens, policemen, and electricity. Ooh, new record. <laughs> Miss Wooly, will we get to see them now? What is she like, Miss Wooly? I don't know. Let's tidy up the room a bit. Ferris, put the Pajisi board away, please. They're taking an awfully long time in the front office. Miss Willie, is she young, old, or young, old, old, young, old, middle? I haven't seen her. All I know is her name is Savage, and she gets the blue room. She better not be exciting. Competition makes me sweat. <laughs> well, bingo, you sure tied that one in a hurry. Please don't call me that. It's a pet name my wife uses. I'm sorry. And I wish you wouldn't single me out to kiss. Well, you are the handsomest. What if my wife came to call and saw me kissing a strange woman? She'd explode. Oh, she would if I know her. Well, would you please try to remember? I'm sorry, I forgot. <gasps> ting ling ling I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Ferris. Yeah, hello, this is Ferris. What's your favorite color? Ferris. Oh, really? Ferris. Yes, Doc Dimmit, right away, of course. Will we get to see them now? I don't know. Hannibal, put up the dartboard, will you? Let's not make a mess of the place, darling. We want now? to make a good first impression. But Miss Willie, I hope she's exciting. No one exciting has been here since a magician's wife. And she was on nerves from being sawed in half so much. Hannibal, what was her name again? Uh, something hyphenated. I didn't. <laughs> no? Okay. But at least she had color. All my relations are so drab. Both my parents were albinos, actually. Oh, Ferris, you shouldn't invent such things. They were. They were emotional albinos. Damn. It's so degrading to do that. You do this when you want to look under a door. So? Um, see anything? Hannibal, can you give me a hand, please? Yeah. Oh, I see strange people coming out of Dr. Emmett's office. Who? One, two, three strange people. And they're coming in here right now. Quick, let's eavesdrop in the hall. Is that ethical, Jeff? Jeff, you know we'll be sent out either way. Well, we could call it an espionage. Ah, I like your thinking. But we need a partner. Come, Miss Patty. You'll be my partner. I'll guard the lights. You know, it's rude to let your guests enter a dark room, Miss Patty. Oh, Ferris, this will be the last time I'll be a part of your peeking. Now, I better not get excited, or else I'll get the hiccups and blow our cover. Oh, no. Let's go. Dr. Emmett will be with you right away. Please tell him that if there's nothing more, we'd like to get started back. Of course, Senator. There are newspapers and magazines in the bin. Please, make yourselves at home. Well, what do you think of it now, Titus? Are you reassured? Somewhat. It certainly doesn't look like an institution. <laughs> Not at all. Mother will be contented and happy here, I'm sure. I just hope we didn't make a mistake. <sighs> Titus, darling, the only mistake we made was in not in taking steps sooner. Perhaps. I don't like to be thought insensitive. Perhaps it would have been wiser to leave her at home with an attendant. That would have been disastrous. Well, you're hard. Someone has to be practical. Oh, no, you're callous. You have married way too many foreigners. <laughs> Samuel, darling, we've done what had to be done. Let's not quarrel about this any longer. Lily Bell is right. This is civilized behavior. I'm sorry to have delayed you. I was anxious to have Dr. Johnson question your mother. Ah, doctor, it's been a good pleasure to have found your establishment so, um, quaint. But then we were assured that your place offered the best money could buy. We hope to offer the best that experience can provide. Uh, doctor, I meant to ask you, um, will Mother be exposed to any, uh, danger here? Not at all. The guests in this wing are in their final stages of treatment. They're extremely kind and cooperative. On the surface, most of them would seem quite as normal as, say, yourself, Senator. Now you don't say. Uh, while we're waiting, Senator, I'd like to ask you a few more questions about this memorial fund of your mother's. Uh, that. There's little more to tell. 
It was her way of getting rid of the entire savage estate. The newspapers called it her happiness fund. Was this indifference to money something recent? I wouldn't say. She's always given money to foolish causes. Would you mind being more specific? There was an Italian farmer who wanted a box of soil from Italy. Just dirt. Mother spent 200 to get it for him. And then there was a flower peddler who wanted a tombstone for his horse. And he got it. After father died, the obsession got progressively worse. Last summer, she chartered a ship to send a thousand school children around the world. Why? She wanted to send them around the world while there was still a world around. We stopped her just as she was on the verge of setting up this fund legally. With the board of directors. Oh, with a fantastic <laughs> board of directors. Not a bishop, a banker, or a lawyer among them. Whom did she choose? A postman, a gardener, a veterinarian, and herself. We should have known her mind was going the day she decided to get up on that stage. That. Have you ever heard of a woman of her age suddenly deciding to become an actress? The unique is routine here, Senator. Nothing that surprises us. But if she had been vain, or even talented, I could have understood it. But she wasn't. She was always quiet, timid even. Then suddenly this amazing change. Grief spirit. But why turn to acting? Life has enough um, drama in it. Wouldn't you say, son? Wouldn't you say, doctor? God knows. Wouldn't you say, doctor? Okay. As the judge says, God knows. And I wish you could explain that bear to us. Oh, obvious exhibitionism. <laughs> Obviously. She took a childish delight in being seen everywhere with that teddy bear. Anything to indulge in this sudden love for notoriety? Her entire conduct was a travesty of dignity and self-respect. And sound business. Can you tell me, Senator, has there ever been a similar pattern of behavior in your mother's side of the family? Why, frankly, I don't know. You see, Doctor, she's not actually our mother. Father remarried when we were children. Oh, I, I see. Oh, but it never changed our opinion of her. Well, I'm afraid I can't be of much help to you until I've had the time to observe her conduct here. Well, you are the doctor. And we know she'll be comfortable in such a charming place. <laughs> well, you know, I wouldn't mind staying here myself. Samuel, this is no place to laugh. But, but we encourage laughter here, Senator. We think it healthy. You do? <laughs> Definitely. It's good therapy. For, as Byron once said, and if I laugh at any mortal thing, tis that I may not weep. Oh. <laughs> 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 Yes, Miss Willie. I beg your pardon, Dr. Emmett, but Dr. Johnson won't be able to complete Mrs. Savage's file at the moment. Why not? He finds her a little uncooperative. Then bring her in here, please. Of course. While you're saying your goodbyes, I'll have a talk with Dr. Johnson. Please don't go, Doctor. Please, Doctor. We think it would be better if you stayed. She's a little vindictive. For some reason, she holds me responsible. Oh, uh, we think we'd better give her a little more time to get over her resentment. Would you come in here, Mrs. Savage? <laughs> Will you have a seat, Mrs. Savage? We waited to say goodbye to you, Mother. I do not like thee, Lily Bell. The reason why, I cannot tell. But this I know and know full well. I do not like thee, Lily Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't she so darling, nurse? I mean, really. <laughs> You know, she's been chanting that over and over, all the way down here. <laughs> Your children are leaving, Mrs. Savage. Wouldn't you like to say goodbye to them? I know they would like to say goodbye to you. Oh, look, the fireflies are out. How lovely. What makes the fireflies light up, Doctor? I really couldn't say, Mrs. Savage. Hmm, I thought you'd know. Isn't this a bug house? This is the cloisters. This is to be your new home. I'm Dr. Emmett. Wouldn't it be fascinating if human beings glowed like fireflies? <gasps> Do you light up, Lily Bell? Lord knows you're flighty. <laughs> <laughs> we might as well go, Titus. She's going to be unpleasant again. 
Surely, mother, you're not going to allow us to depart in such an atmosphere of bitterness. <laughs> fifty needles and fifty pins and fifty dirty Republicans. Go! Oh, she's determined to take the wrong attitude. It's futile. We might as well go. Doctor, I'll send more of her clothes down later. We couldn't pack but one grip under the circumstances. <laughs> yes, well, Sunday is visitor's day if you'd care to bring them down then. Well, uh, my sister is visiting Paris next week, but we'll make arrangements. Good night, Mother. If there's anything you need, Mrs. Savage, Miss Wilhelmina will take care of you. We have a lovely garden out there. You'll be able to see it in the morning. You know, when I was a child, we used to say, 30 needles and 30 pins. You've added 20 more dirty Republicans. Well, it's a fault of mine. Exaggeration. I don't know why I try to irritate them so much. I just end up irritating myself. Well, I suppose it has to be exasperating now to be funny later. Hm. Oh. Oh, I notice one of its eyes is missing. It must have fallen out in the office. I'll look as soon as they go. Don't bother. It fell out last fall at the opera. I'd have gone after it, but the usher was so nasty about my lighting matches during the magic fire music. Do you know what this is? I couldn't possibly guess. It's a teddy bear. Haven't you seen one before? <laughs> Certainly, but not that big. Do you know what I do with it? Suppose you tell me. I sleep with it. Do you? Yes, I do. Are you going to treat me as if I were an imbecile too? No, no, we mustn't be hostile. You're right. You haven't harmed me. Would you care to know why I sleep with it? If you'd care to tell me. I don't care to. <laughs> and I'll tell you. I'm too old to remarry, yet too fastidious to sleep with the cat. Then, by all means, you must take it to bed with you here. Would you care to take off your hat? Well, if I'm going to spend the rest of my life here, I might as well. It's, it's a mighty saucy hat. I know. It's a dollar piece of felt with one chicken feather, and it's $850. <sighs> Why, the economy should be so expensive, I don't know. It takes imagination. And the blood of pirates. But I wanted it. I've wanted a hat like this since I was 16, for all the good it does me now. Suppose you could use it. I'm not at all sure for what. Maybe you should keep it, Mrs. Savage. You might need it. Oh, my goodness. My head looks like the matted end of a coconut. No, 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 no. I don't think so. It's a heavenly color. You should have seen it last year. It was bright red. And then, just for the fun of it, I dyed it black with a white streak down the middle. No, I looked like a skunk. Oh. <laughs> Finally, I just gave up and tinted it blue. It seems to go with everything. Well, it'll certainly go with your room. Would you like to go up and get settled? Is it time to lock me up already? I wouldn't dream of locking you up, Mrs. Savage. Oh, did you bring a suitcase? My daughter did. I wasn't consulted. Well, I'll go out in the office and check it out. You, you can wait here. Alone? Of course. No handcuffs? We have the honor system, Mrs. Savage. Honor system, indeed. <laughs> Coast is clear. Wait, wait, three, wait, wait, you're counting now. Two, one. <laughs> Why, hello. Miss Swilly says the bar's only there to keep the world outside. That's pretty corny, isn't it? Oh my goodness, it's alive! Miss Patty, what is that thing? This is my bear, Reed. He's quite harmless. It won't bite? It won't shed, lay eggs, or bark.
All right then. <laughs> in, in that case, any, any, any friend of yours is a friend of mine. Perhaps we should introduce ourselves. I'm Florence Williams. How do you do? We've been expecting you. Um, may I introduce Paris Ray? Say you love me. <laughs> but we've just met. You don't have to mean it. I just feel wonderful when people say they love me. Oh, well, in that case, I'm sure that everyone here loves you. You hear that, guys? She isn't spoiled. <laughs> Welcome to the Cloisters. Climb it best by government test. Thank you. And this is Hannibal. And this is our Mrs. Patty. How do you do, Mrs. Patty? I hate everything in the okay, world. But most of all, I hate lightning, sun cabbage, custard, mustard, spiders, blisters, girdles, mice, bees, keys, ragweed, chloroform, rhubarb, barnacles, bats, broken glass, eels, crumbs, drunks, tombstones, gallstones, salt, and pepper. Why don't you like rhubarb? Mrs. Patty won't answer you, Mrs. Savage. She only recites the things she hates. Sweet, but stubborn. Mrs. Patty stopped talking about 20 years ago. Why? She got mad. Her husband told her to shut up. And she did. She gave up conversation for life. But she decided to give up electricity for Lent. You are a woman of wisdom, Mrs. Patty. There's only one thing wiser than saying very little, and that's saying nothing at all. Would you like to hold it? She likes you. I like her. Oh, my. You haven't met Jeff. Come here, Jeff. Uh, please excuse my right hand. Certainly. Is it a toothache? Jeff's face is scarred, and he likes to spare people. Uh, well, you don't need to spare me. I have to look at myself every morning. Ooh. <laughs> well, Dr. Emmett, he refuses to let me wear a bandage. Well, we have to humor our doctors every once in a while. Well, now you've met everyone. We are a small group in the swing, and I hope you find us no, enjoy. No, no, no. She hasn't met everyone. Guys, <laughs> the holy terror. <laughs> oh, of yeah. course. How stupid of me. Yeah, Florence, where is he? I don't know. He was here a few moments ago. Uh, um, maybe he's out in the hall. Yeah. I'll see. John Thomas! Okay, you won't hurt her, will you? Gracious, why should I? You won't object, will you? Well, what is John Thomas? Her son. What do you feel? Here? Yes, he was born here. I can't. Uh, okay, now under here. Um, oh, here he is, uh, asleep under the couch. Oh, look. Oh, my. Uh, my husband warned me I'd be a bad mother. Yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Savage, this is my son. You like children, don't you? Everyone's but my own. Um, how old is he? Five. Wow, he's big for five months. <gasps> no, no, five years. Oh, I meant years. I, I'm um, will you excuse me? I have to put him to bed. He has the, uh, he has the measles. Excuse me. Phew. That was exceedingly kind of you, Miss Savage, not to notice anything wrong. It was, it was crazy. You were so quick, like, <laughs> lightning. Poor Florence isn't well, and we pretend for her sake, and we hope you will too. Of course. It's important for you to know, Miss Savage, that we're all free to leave whenever we want to, but uh, we don't go because there's no better place to go. You see, Miss Savage, you are a very lucky woman to be accepted, if I do say so myself, <laughs> which I do. So wouldn't that make... Uh, uh, what is that? That is the signal for us to go to our rooms. Yeah. It's the evil of the machine age. Perfect pistons and no manners. And ours is not to reason why. I wonder why no one ever quotes the first line. Someone blundered. Oh. Well, good night. Yeah. We do not say that here. It means there's no more. No more what? There's no more of so much. Don't let Jeff's manner disturb you. Uh, during the war, his plane got shot down. He hasn't quite recovered yet. Oh, was his face badly burned? Nope. nope. You see, uh, he, he bailed out before it was too late. He was the only survivor of his crew. His scars go deeper than we can see. Now you see, Miss Savage, that Hannibal and I, we're the only ones free to leave. We just pretend for the um, pride of others, um, right? And um, Miss Patty, Miss, Miss Patty, you come here. Miss Patty, listen. Miss Patty, come here right now. Miss Patty. Ooh. 
Jeebers. <sighs> now, would you excuse me, Miss Savage? I have to go apologize to Miss Patty, or else she'll shulk. Why, I could even tear up my tongue right now. Whoa, 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 whoa. Harris has the gift of the good for saying the wrong thing. I should think it would take a bit of doing to apologize to someone who doesn't speak and sulks anyway. Ah, uh, don't worry about Mrs. Patty. Just treat her like a clock. See how the day goes, but don't expect an answer. She'd be at her easel. Oh, is she an artist? I don't know whether she's an artist or not, but she paints. Portraits? Seascapes, which is rather odd because she's never seen the ocean. <gasps> Miss Savage. I forgot to tell you, when you go to your room tonight, just remember, don't sleep. <laughs> what did he mean about not sleeping? None of us sleep here. Well, where do you sleep? Well, we go to our rooms, we agree to that principle, but we never close our eyes. You see, when today ends, tomorrow begins. Today, we're safe. Tomorrow may be filled with disaster. Couldn't it be any much simpler? Not much. Today is the only certainty. Ooh. Hannibal, why aren't you in your room? I am, in spirit. And you know what they say, it's what spirit counts. Go to your room. OK. Um, Mrs. Savage, remember, fight the night. <laughs> Did they all come in to meet you? Well, there was a Mrs. Patty and about four others who have no business being here at their age. I quite agree. Do you think I belong here? Oh, no, Mrs. Savage, I'm kept far too busy to have any opinions. Mm -hmm. I'd like to know what they've told you about me. Was there anything to tell? Did they happen to mention my memorial fund? Not to me. Hmm. Then they probably told you that my husband's death affected my reason. That would be understandable. But untrue. Why? Weren't you happy with your husband? I met Jonathan when I was 16. I loved him from the moment I met him until the moment he died. Do you know what that meant? I think so. Well, you don't, my dear. It meant that my only aim in life was to make him happy, to do what he wanted, to anticipate what would please him. And that meant that all the other things I'd ever wanted had to be forgotten. But, but surely you had no regrets. None while he lived, but after he died, I remembered all the foolish things I'd always wanted to do. Well, what had you always wanted to do? Oh, things that would have shocked poor Jonathan. Such as dyeing your hair blue. Well, that. And studying French, and ballet, and people. As a young girl, I was always sure I'd make a great actress, so with no responsibilities and time running out, I decided to be one. But don't you think you've waited too long? I certainly do. Had I been a fool in my youth, no one would have noticed the difference in my old age. Now I'd never think of you as old. So, having experienced all these things myself and learning once again the importance of unimportant things, I decided I'd help others have the things that they had always wanted. And how did you plan on doing that? By establishing the Jonathan Savage Memorial Fund, a foundation for giving money away in the memory of my husband. And that insane idea has brought me here. Now, it's not as bad as that. Surely you'll find it very pleasant here. Would you care to go up to your room? Well, at least I learned one thing from my French lessons. And what's that? What I am. Uh, more canard. That's a dead duck, I believe. Oh, it's not that bad. Yes, it is. Someday you'll realize that a great injustice was done to me, that I was always quite sane, yet here I am, and here they'll try to keep me with my few foolish years taken from me. What are you doing? If people were to walk around the edge of the carpet every once in a while, it would save from wearing it out in the middle. Oh.
Beautiful, beautiful. What would we do without you, Hannibal? Uh, you could play in the concert field, Hannibal, if you work at it. Oh, you are so right, Jeff. I simply surrender. I am a rag. Do come in, Mrs. Savage. I trust you had a pleasant, sleepless night. Lovely, thank you. Not a wink. You just miss Hannibal's recital. Oh, I heard it. As a matter of fact, it's what brought me out of my room this morning. You won't believe this, but Hannibal has never played a violin until last year. What makes you think I wouldn't believe it, my dear? <laughs> Was it something you composed yourself, Hannibal? Bah! With variations of my own. You see, Miss Savage, mathematics loss was certainly our gain. I don't quite follow that, Ferris. Ferris knows I used to be a statistician. Oh, thank you. Watch. Now I understand. Give him a fraction to multiply. I'm afraid I wouldn't know whether he was right or not. My last position was charting trends for the government. I was supposed to keep my finger on the pulse of the public and my ear to the ground. Um, a rather vulnerable position, was it not? Very. I was fired and replaced by electronic calculator. I should think that you would hate electricity, too. No, but I did want to make money with my brains, so I spent the next two years seeing what, what could be made for a dime, sold for a dollar. I'm afraid my education was wasted. I'm going to send John Thomas to Princeton. Their boys aren't very bright, but they sure are gentlemen. Miss Savage, may we ask you a personal question? They're the only ones worth asking, my dear. A little bird told us you used to be an actress, and we're bursting with curiosity. Is it true? Well, I suppose if being on stage makes you an actress, then I guess it's true. Jefe. He is the bird, Florence, my little bird, Jefe. Yeah, he told us that you are performed on Z New York stage. I wonder if we ever seen you, Mrs. Savage. Not unless you were quick. Actually, I was only in two plays. The first was Macbeth. <gasps> Macbeth! Shh! Macbeth. <sighs> oh, I adore Macbeth. All that blood. I sent a pint of my blood to the Red Cross once. They threw it back at me <sighs> with a note that said, no, thank you. I should think that you are a novel departure as Lady Macbeth. Thank you, Jeffrey. I can't tell you how much I agree with you, but they cast me as a witch. Ooh. Oh. A perfect witch. Ooh. Thank you, dear. <laughs> Please, Miss Savage, speak some witch talk for us. The stage is yours right here. Okay. I'm afraid I bitterly, but man by nature's optimistic. If he weren't, he'd eat his young. So, I decided I'd write my own play. <gasps> you wrote a play? I did indeed. <laughs> With a courage born of ignorance and a plot out of wedlock. What part did you play? The lead, of course. Not Guilty, starring Ethel P. Savage. What's the P stand for? I haven't the faintest idea. Oh. My numerologist said I needed it in my name for luck. He was right. We ran a year. Uh, tell me, Miss Savage, what was the play about? A mother who murdered a man and was defended by a young woman lawyer who turns out to be her own daughter. I had red hair and died in my daughter's arms every night in two matinees a week, just as the curtain came down and the jury whispered, not guilty. I gathered the notices were good? Well, um, they were sincere, but it didn't make any difference. What did they say? The Times said that my pl play set theater back 100 years, which it couldn't possibly because I stole the plot from Adam X, and that's only 80 years old. Uh, but don't you think they would know about oh, that? Oh, but the Wall Street Journal was wonderful. They said I brought something new to the theater. Money. Oh, Ferris, money isn't new. Uh, what did Wall Street say? They said I had a tenacious mediocrity unhampered by taste. Yeah, but that's not oh. good. It was perfect. In our ads, we simply said, tenacious and unhampered. And you ran a year. We'd have been running yet if my daughter hadn't come home and stopped us. Oh, I know I was bad and audiences only came to laugh at me, but we both had such a good time. What more could you ask? I do miss it. Oh, well, 
My turn is coming. You know, Miss Savage, I do not think that was very nice of... <gasps> Sacre bleu, Mr. Savage! What are you doing? Ferris, what's wrong? She is going to read the newspaper! Oh, no. Oh, but what's the matter? I wouldn't do that if I were you, Mr. You, Savage. You really mustn't read it. It will only make you unhappy. Now, just a moment. I know what the paper's going to say, so there's nothing you can hide from me. I've just been waiting for it to happen. Waiting for what to happen, Mrs. Savage? What it says in the paper? But we don't know what it says in the paper. Then why are you trying to keep me from reading it? We have an agreement. We don't read the paper until it's a month old. We find it much happier when we wait. What are you waiting for? Why simply we are waiting for? Uh, Hannibal, what do we wait for? Uh, perspective. That's right. Peace of mind. Security. We believe it's better to read about unpleasant things it's a month after they've happened. It's reassuring once you know it's over and there's nothing you can do about it. So just give it here, you know. <laughs> oh! My carrot! Ah! My dear people, there's something in the paper that I'd like to know about. And I'd like to know now, not next month. We're only trying to help you. Yes. We believe, or really, Disaster as a whole is easier to digest once it's aged a little. Like my mozzarella. Yeah, it's mozzarella. <laughs> you don't like my mozzarella? No. Are you? You're what? very kind, but I've made my bed, and I'd like to know who's in it. We can't prevent Mrs. Savage from reading the paper. We don't know her well enough to be rude. It is true. Florence is right. Well, if you read anything unpleasant, do not dare and open your mouth. I don't want to hear it. No. no. There's trouble in the world, it won't help us to know about it. This is yesterday's paper. I want today's paper. It isn't here yet. Well, when does it come? Well, I don't know. <gasps> is there a radio here? Yeah, it's right there. <gasps> Maybe I can catch the news. Why didn't someone mention that there was a radio here? You didn't ask us. <sighs> this doesn't light up, is there something wrong with the set? Let me check for you. <laughs> hmm. Well, you see, of course, it does not have any tubes. It doesn't have any... What? Uh, tubes. Mrs. Patty steals them. No one knows where she puts them. <laughs> Why didn't anyone mention that the set had no tubes? Because you didn't ask us. <laughs> dear, 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 dear. How high is that wall? Very high. Let me get precise measurement for you. It is 10 baguettes high. Hmm. And I suppose no one ever just leaves the great gate open. No, not really. Don't look beyond the garden, Mrs. Savage. There may be a better place out there, but if you give this up to look for it, you may not find what you're looking for and lose what you have. You'll like it here after a while. Except in January, the rooms get so chilly. We like you already. It's not that I don't find you all, um... Enchanting, but, but you... Uh... But we what? Uh, please don't say anything mean, Miss Savage. Ooh. What is that? It's garden hour. Do come with us, Mrs. Savage. Where? We all have a little pot and we plant anything, plants or vegetables. Last summer, I planted a bird seed. What came up, Ferris? <laughs> um. Nothing. But it was a rich horticultural experience. <sighs> it's a beautiful evergreen in the center. And at Christmas, we have lights that says, Merry Christmas, keep out. Come with us. I'll show you my delphiniums. That's all right. I have some serious thinking to do. I'll just um, stay here. But Miss Savage, the buzzer buzz, one has to obey orders. Uh, what are you doing? Oh, I believe in wearing a carpet out evenly. Wearing a carpet out evenly? How prudent! I'm going to join you. But don't you have to garden? No, this is more constructive. Oh. <laughs> I'll help too. We must all do our share. Come on, boys. Many feet make light work. Oh, I didn't mean to start a procession. We no. are right behind you. Uh, well, this is a re well, this is a refreshing change. And besides, women usually leave me in circles, but this time it's a rectangle. Okay, so Hannibal, you are going to step on the green. Jeff, you take the red. Uh, you <coughs> take the yellow. <laughs> Miss Willie. Do you know what we are doing? Well, I suppose you're wearing out the carpet evenly. <gasps> Little bird jefe, did you tell her? No, I... Little bird? No, it did wasn't... Did you tell me. her? I, I, you told didn't her, didn't I you? hear the buzzer? Uh, 
I, I don't think I heard the buzzer ring. I think it is broken. <laughs> oh, Ferris, aren't you ashamed? I wish I was dead. Hmm. <laughs> I'm afraid that this is my fault, Miss Willie. We didn't feel like gardening anyhow. Oh, Florence, you shouldn't say such things. Why you work so hard on your flowers, you wouldn't want them to die, would you? I don't want anything to die. Nice. It is true, though. Florence would not hurt a fly. She catches them and lets them out the window so they could be free. Well, I think we all better go out into the, into the garden. Ferris, share your seeds with Mrs. Savage, will you? Everyone, run along now. Well, guess I'm growing something. Yay! <laughs> Aren't you going with them, Mrs. Savage? Actually, I wanted to talk to you alone. Oh, well, what can I do for you then? Oh, a great deal. And it might be that I could do a great deal for you, too. Are you about to offer me a bribe, Mrs. Savage? How did you know? Everyone does at first. <sighs> All right, still. My offer is a little different. I have the money. I'll give you $200,000 to leave that door open tonight. 300000 Don't you like us, Mrs. Savage? Oh, that is the most irritating answer to a sound business offer, my dear. 400000 You could be free of this place, too. But I don't wish to be free of it. Oh, fine. 500,000. You could go around the world, see Cairo, Mandalay, the South Pacific. But I've been to Cairo and Mandalay and the South Pacific. You have? I served four years as an army nurse. All right, still, you should be able to use $500,000. Now, Mrs. Savage, where would you possibly get that much money? It's a fortune. Oh, don't worry about that. I can get it for you, and in the current idiom, too. $500,000 is peanuts. Oh, I believe you, but I'm afraid I simply have to refuse. <sighs> then you leave me no choice but to burn the place down. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't do that. Yes, I would. No, you wouldn't. Enough people here wouldn't know how to save themselves. You think of them first. If you believe that I belong here, why are you appealing to my reason? I wasn't, dear. I was appealing to your emotions. <sighs> Still, I'm going to get out quickly enough. It's just that bribing you would have been so much cheaper. Now it's going to cost me a couple million at least. Why, good morning, Doctor. Good morning. Is Mrs. Savage outside? Yes, she just this moment went out to the garden. What is her state of mind this morning? The usual pattern. She actually just offered me a bribe. What did she offer you? Oh, dear, the highest yet. $500,000. Oh, the poor dear. Did she sound confident? Definitely manic. She talked as if she still controlled her own affairs. Apparently, she still does. Read this. I've been talking with her children. They're practically out of their minds themselves. The senator is leaving Washington at once. He'll pick up his sister in New York, then the judge in Boston, and be her by tonight. Why, this, this is the most amazing story I've ever read. When did they discover it? I gather this morning. They asked me to confine her to a room. I simply can't understand it. How could she get away with so much money? Apparently, her husband left the estate to her. She's been secretly selling out control ever since. One hundred million dollars. That must be a typographical error. No, they had it all right. But what could she have done with it? As her son says, God knows. Could she have spent it? I doubt it. Will you call her in, please? I'd better tell her what to expect. Oh, Mrs. Savage, would you come in, please? Dr. Emma would like to have a word. Are you going to place in seclusion? Of course not, though sometimes I wish I could place relations in seclusion. They're always much more trouble than patients. Do you think she has any idea what could have happened to the money? If she does, she's the only one. Is there any possibility that there's a method in her madness? 
Miss Willie, I find it harder every day to say exactly where reason ends and madness begins. For the moment, I must accept the presumptive evidence of her stepchildren. Well, from what I've heard, her son's record in Congress would give any good psychiatrist a nasty turn. It certainly would. And the sensationalism of her daughter's six divorces doesn't speak well for her emotional stability. Uh, good morning, Mrs. Savage. Uh, will you have a seat? Uh, would you help Miriam out on the telephones? She's been deluged with calls from the newspapers. I think I know what you're going to tell me. Do you? I see you have the morning papers. I wondered how long it would take them to find out. Then you're aware of what you've done and the consequences. Oh, it's too early for consequences. May I see them? The senator phoned from Washington. We can expect them by tonight. Indeed we can. Well, I'm not going anyplace. <laughs> I just don't get it. How could you possibly have spent $100 million without anyone knowing about it? Who said I spent it? The papers say you did. Oh, what do they know? I didn't spend it. I couldn't. I hid it. You hid it. A nice half million dollar non-negotiable bonds that can't be traced. Why? I don't ask what you do with your money, doctor. I'm sorry this has happened to Mrs. Savage, but I'm afraid your hidden treasure is going to prove a great disadvantage to you. That's because you're a doctor, and doctors never know the value of money. Would you like to know how long it would take me to earn that much money, Mrs. Savage? Oh, uh, excuse me. Um, I just came here to get my violin. Ferris wants me to play music while he plants his seeds. Just a moment, Hannibal. You were a statistician, right? Mm -hmm. How long would it take the average doctor to earn $100 million? Well, he has to start before the birth of Christ, all the way up to the burning of Rome and St. Joanne and Santa Rola, with time out, of course, for Norman Conquest, Crusades, 100 Years' War, 30 Years' War, Seven Years' War, working all the way up to the discovery of America, all the way up to penicillin and bubble gum, but that's without time, of course, of state tax, federal tax, amusement tax, luxury tax, and you add 100 years to that. Thank you, Hannibal. It's a great deal to be responsible for, Mrs. Savage. You're welcome. So, what was the good doctor up to? A bit of emotional blackmail, I suspect. Hmm. Hannibal, would you guess to look at me and that I'm worth $100 million on the hoof? No. You see, the human body's only worth of uh, $2 of calcium, $2 of iodine, and uh, $5 of phosphorus. And you add that all up, even with today's highest prices, nobody's worth over $9. <laughs> so, you only value me at $9. Whoa, 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 whoa. You misunderstand me, Mrs. Savage. You said worth. Your value is inestimable. Hannibal, I like you. I like you very much. You make me feel important. You make me feel like dancing. <gasps> Splendid! What shall I play then? Anything! I know the flight of the bumblebee. Could anything be more appropriate? The bees come home and find the honey gone. Someone is going to be stung. Play, Hannibal! <laughs> Guys, how about this? Let's play a game of cards. Uh, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Ferris, eh, I, uh, I don't know about that. Ferris, there's a day for cards and there's a day for Legos. <sighs> Fine. Can I at least play with John Thomas? Oh, be careful, Ferris. I will, I will. Lawrence, you can play with us. Oh, Ferris? Yeah? Is this yours? Um, oh, that's where that went. Ooh. I'll keep score. 
Okie dokie. Come on, you set up the cards. Are you reading? Is it interesting? Very. I'm not disturbing you, am I? Now, whatever would make you think that? Oh. What's the matter, Ferris? Nothing. All right. Well, you see, it's just that no one has told me they've loved me this life long day. Yes, they have. Oh, no, they haven't. I've been waiting. I heard Florence say it at the dinner table. Did she? Did I? See? She said, don't eat too fast, Ferris. Oh, now is that saying she loved me? Yes. <clears throat> People can mean it when they say, take an umbrella, it's raining. Or, hurry back. Or even, watch out, okay. you'll break your neck. There's hundreds of ways of wording it. You just have to listen for it, my dear. My dentist... He said I had perfect occlusion. Mm. Now, was that saying he loved me? What else? You know, the first time I met my husband, he told me I had a good head on my shoulders. Oh. I knew immediately that he loved me. Thank you so much, Miss Savage. I've been missing so much. You hear that, guys? My dentist loves me. Good for you. <laughs> Thank yeah. you so much, and I'm sorry for disturbing you. It's you a... can go back to reading. Okay. Mrs. Savage? Yes? I'm keeping score and the boys won't help me. What's seven, five, and four? 49. Wait, what? Ah! It's my own system, Hannibal. I refuse to submit to the tyranny of mathematics. <laughs> then I win. Well, I guess I'm keeping score after this. Miss Savage. Yes. There is one more thing you could actually clear up for me. What? Now, why is it suddenly Sunday when it was Sunday only yesterday? Why do you think it's Sunday, Ferris? Well, you see, if your children are coming back to visit you, that must mean it's Visitor's Day. But Visitor's Day is on Sunday. But Sunday was yesterday. But now it's today. Okay. It isn't Sunday, Ferris. My brood are coming back because they just couldn't wait a week. Now, shouldn't that make you happy? It should but it doesn't. Excuse me, but don't you like them? Not at all. Well, that's a wicked thing to say. Oops. But if it consoles you, Florence, my husband was left with three small children. But you liked them when they were little. Oh, I wanted them to like me desperately, but they always resented me. You know, the first time I put my arms around Lily Bell, she bit me, and she bit me every day until she was 10. That must have made you really high strong, just saying. Uh, what exactly stopped her at the age of 10? I suppose at 10, a girl begins to consider her teeth. But the boys were better, right? Not always. They'd been spoiled by money. And whenever I tried to correct them, they'd break something I treasured to get even with me. Oh, it was a happy day when they went away to school. Well, of course, school must have taught them something. Yes, French. And whenever they came home after that, they spoke nothing but French so I couldn't understand them. And I haven't understood them since. Ooh. But you must be proud of them now. The senator's quite famous, isn't he? That he is, make no mistake. I'm told he gets more threatening phone calls than any other man in Congress. I believe AT&T lists him as a valuable asset. But... If he's so unpopular, why do the voters keep on sending him back to Washington? They're no fools. It's the only way to keep him out of the state. But the other son, he's a judge, isn't he? That's a distinction. Oh, he's made it one. He has the distinction of having had more of his decisions reversed than any other man in jurisprudence. Excuse me. Your daughter, is she pretty, Miss Savage? <laughs> Well, there's a picture of her in the paper. 
I'll show you when you can judge uh, for yourself. Uh, oh, please don't read us anything out of the paper. I won't. I'll just show you her picture. Hey, we don't look at pictures either. Yeah. People are always pinned under trucks. Well, how about... I take a quick look. Jeff, Jeff. Just to make sure nothing's horrible, okay? Okay. Oh, she's a queen. She's wearing a crown. Oh, a queen? That's a tiara, Ferris. It's an old picture taken from when she was married to her Slovak prince. Uh, let's take a quick look, Hannibal. Well, just to be polite. Then she's a princess. No, she discarded the prince a good six husbands ago. Oh, but why? Hell hath no music like a woman playing second fiddle. I don't know when I've seen a prettier tiara. <laughs> her dress is cut rather low. But she kept the tiara. Indeed she did. I think she sleeps in it. I don't like her. Why, Ferris? Let's do something, uh, let's do something, well, not that mean, but kind of mean. Like, like putting your picture on the dartboard and throwing darts at it. <gasps> Ferris? My dear, you're a sweet child. That's exactly what we'll do. Okay. Oh, you wouldn't. <laughs> I need the exercise, my dear. Whoop. Oh, Ferris, you're such an evil guy to think of such a thing. Hey, don't talk to me like that. You know I'm sensitive. Oh, Florence, leave him alone. I'm the culprit. Now let's see what can I pin it up with. Miss Patty has thumbtacks. Oh, Ferris, I'm so disappointed in you. Mrs. Patty, I wish you I'd know died in that my that is the most beautiful seascape I have ever seen. I can actually smell the ocean. I think the beauty lies in the creativity. You challenge the imagination. Can I borrow a thumbtack, please? It's setting a very bad example for motherhood. Oh, stop worrying, Florence. Don't you like surprises? Yes. Well, I want to surprise Lily Bell. I'll tee off. Ooh. I want to go, I want to go. Jeff, I'm going to beat you. Now, target for tonight. Ooh. Oh, savage. Right in the tiara. I got it. Something very bad's going to happen. Dang it, I missed. All right, Miss Patty, it's all you. You got this, lady. <gasps> oh. Miss Patty did it. It was Miss Patty. Miss Patty did it. What's it was all Miss Patty. Miss Patty. Miss Miss Patty. Okay. Everyone to the upstairs study. Mrs. Savage's visitors are here. <gasps> visitors? Miss Willie, may I please stay to see the visitors? You never let me see visitors anymore. I'm sorry, Ferris, but the, ins the senator insisted on privacy. You know, one day I'm gonna get out of here without saying a word. I have as much pride as anyone. How's the weather out there? Stormy. Here are your visitors, Mrs. Savage. That will be all, nurse. You can wait outside. I'll leave the latch off the door and wait at the whole desk. I don't know what to say to you. For the life of me, I don't know what to say. Polite people say, good evening. I'm Deception not... is so I'm... unlike you. I'm not angry, I'm just hurt. Do you have the faintest enormity of what you've done? You've sold control of 15 Savage Industries. We'll have to sell our stock in Savage Brass to buy it back. Oh, didn't you find out? I sold that first. <gasps> I mustn't get excited. I mustn't get excited. I get wrinkles. What else? What else did you dispose of? Everything in my name. Oh, oh we're ruined. What did you do with it? You couldn't have possibly spent it. Tell us what you did with it, dear. I converted them into neat little half million dollar non-negotiable bonds and buried them. When you say buried, you mean hidden, don't you? No, I mean buried as in funeral. As in in the ground? I feel physically ill. Where is it buried? I forget. Oh, Lord, grant my mother one moment of clarity. Where did you bury it? Concentrate!
best thing in the world for getting wrinkles out of the face, Lily Bell. <laughs> I've got to do something about getting you a new eye. Do you know any places that sells bear's eyes, Lily Bell? Give me that swimming thing and Lily Bell, Lily Bell. stop it! Stop it, you're just antagonizing her. We'll get nowhere shouting! <laughs> I'm sorry, Mother. Hold your bear. We forget that you're sick. What we must make you understand, Mother, is that it's not the money involved, but merely the pride of each and every single one. Ah! What? She bit me! Nonsense. Whatever Mother would do, she wouldn't descend to biting. It was a wasp. If there was ever a wasp, it's the woman we call Mother. I know when I'm bitten. Lily Bell, there is no need to raise your voice. Does it hurt? Of course it hurts! Both of you, stop it! We can't afford to fight amongst ourselves. Mm, you can't afford anything. <laughs> Mother, we simply refuse to be angry with you. Lily Bell, apologize. I will not. Lily Bell. Lily Bell. <laughs> Mother, I don't object to your biting me. Gnaw and mangle me to the bone. Gum me to your heart's content. Only tell us what you did with our money. My money. You've already had your share. The Savage Estate is ours. It belonged to Savage Family for generations. For eight generations. It's unthinkable. You should be the first Savage to be found wanting. Found wanting what? The Savage Pride. Mm. Now, I want you to listen to me and listen good. This money is a sacred trust. Oh! Not... What now? I just ask you to look. <laughs> She's been throwing darts at my picture. What of it? It can't possibly hurt you. It's a vicarious form of murdering someone. It's just the worst voodoo magic known to science. Guys, I think we're losing ground. We were fostered by a werewolf. Savage son of us. My patience is exhausted. What did you do with the money? I told you I buried it. Where? Unless you tell us at once, we're going to send you to a public institution. We will not tolerate this kind of criminal waste. Oh, you've got me in such a state. I can't think. I haven't a brain in my head anyhow. You've said so time and time again. Not me, mother. Oh, Ow, okay. All this shouting has given me a headache. I can't remember a thing. What do you mean you can't remember a thing? Of course you can remember a thing. I can't, my head is pounding. Titus, we'd better be careful. I know. Is there anything we can get for you, mother? Yes, the only thing that clears my head is those powders I used to take. Then we'll get some, where are they? I'm out of them. We'll get more. Will you? Of course. Oh, all right, here's the prescription number for my druggist. In Boston. You mean drive all the way out to Boston? Where is everyone? Are you ill? Yeah. Okay. Titus, <laughs> we'd better come back in the morning with those powders. We're not getting anywhere tonight. I agree with you. Get the prescription filled. Get it filled, Samuel. <laughs> when we get home, I'm going to bed. Mother, are you prepared to tell us what you've oh. done with those bonds in the morning? Oh. Pound, oh. Oh. pound, pound. I'm gonna go get the chauffeur to get ready so you guys, um, you know, just stay there. <laughs> Samuel! Samuel! What got into him? Well, Mother, we'll be back first thing in the morning. Pound, pound, pound. I'll have to, I'll have Dr. Emmett prepare her a sedative. Lily Bell, psst. What do you mean by psst? I have something to tell you about the bonds. Close the door. Well, I want to tell you, and you alone, where I hid them. Why me? To 
Titus and Samuel are fools. And what if something happened to me overnight? The bonds would be lost. Oh, it was Titus who wanted you here, not I. Where did you hide them? Well, where would you hide $100 million? I mean, if you didn't trust the banks. I don't know. Under a rock? Of course not. In your mattress? Of course. You're never far from your house, but what if you were and it burned down? Are you going to tell me or not? Have you ever been to the Museum of Natural History? No. Well, I have. Very educational and fireproof. <coughs> Mother, please. Do you know what's on the third floor of the museum? How could I? The Department of Ichthyology. What are you talking about? In the last room on the third floor, hanging from two wires, is a big, dusty porpoise. Well? I stuffed my bonds in that stuffed fish when no one was looking. <gasps> I don't believe you. Name me a safer place. Only a fool would do such a thing. That's me. <laughs> How do you get a package of bonds inside a porpoise? Easy. A razor blade and scotch tape. <laughs> How do I know you're telling me the truth? There's a simple way to find out. <laughs> you must think I'm very gullible. I have no intention of hunting inside a porpoise. Lily Bell, are we to hold the door for you all night? Samuel is honking. <laughs> Let him honk. <laughs> Dr. Emmett will be with you in a moment, Mother. Titus. Yes? Kiss your mother goodbye. You bit Lily Bell. I don't trust you. That's ironic because I trust you. In fact, I was just about to tell you where the bonds are. Uh, Mother, surely you know I never meant for you to be here. It was all Lily Bell's idea. I wanted no part of it. Uh, will you get me out of here and let me alone? You know I will. All right, then I'll tell you. My bonds are in a tin box. Where? Where? Do you remember when I went to Washington with a group from the Red Hat Society? No. Well, I do. Oh, we had lunch with the First Lady. Uh, I was the best dressed, of course. I had the biggest hat, the most, the most feathers on what my What are you boat. talking about? My bonds are buried in the President's hothouse. Oh, I don't believe you. You didn't believe Pearl Harbor until you investigated. Why would you choose such a public place? Everybody in and out. Well, I'm not very bright. I'm the only man who can't get into the White House. Then you should agree with him oftener. <laughs> How do I know you didn't imagine this? There's a simple way to find out. Dig! Oh, no, I'm not falling into that trap. You didn't bury the bonds there. In the corner, under the petunia bed. Titus, are you coming or not? Samuel's going to leave without us. Yes, yes, I'm coming. I refuse to believe you. <gasps> Miss Savage! Mm -hmm. Did you really hide all that money? Yes. We listen to everything. We're horrible. We're quite ashamed. We, st we tried to stop listening and sneak away, but we couldn't without we making too much noise. All wish we were dead, right, guys? Um. <laughs> now, did you really hide all that money? I did indeed, for my memorial fund. Now you're giving it back. You are very generous for your size and weight. <sighs> oh. uh, but what about the judge? You didn't tell, tell him where his share was. That prescription was really a note saying to dig under the chimney. Mm. But why would you hide the money if you're going to tell him where it was anyways? What makes you think I did? Because we heard you. <sighs> <sighs> foolish I am, but not that foolish. Whatever is under the chimney or the president's petunias or stuck in that porpoise, I can assure you, is not my little bundle of bonds. Ah. Ah. Nothing makes the truth so shabby as a magnificent lie. How splendid. So how did you know that they would believe you? Because they want to believe me. They might consider it degrading to go out digging. But they will. How can you be sure? 
There are a million things a man won't do for five dollars, but there aren't five things a man won't do for a million. They will dig. All right, Jeff. Oh, hey, oh got it. I almost. Right, go, Jeff. Aw, oh, you should have used your other hand. Oh, wait. Okay. I told you. I write your deck three, hand. and this angle you get. Aw, oh, not even on the paper. I didn't know anyone was in here. I didn't know you could play the piano. Well, I only play when I'm alone. Oh, you shouldn't be so shy, Jeff. No one's going to compare you with a professional. Well, I am a professional. Oh. I made my debut a week before the war. It's Jeffrey Meredith. You see? Why? It says you were brilliant, Jeff. Forgive me, I should have known. Well, I was going to play with the Philharmonic. I didn't, but I have the contract to prove that I might have. Oh, but you never play, Jeff. Please go on, I'd like to hear you. No, I don't like to be stared at. I'll look the other way and listen. Please don't insist. I wouldn't dream of it. Thank you. Can you keep a secret? About 10 minutes. <laughs> well, Dr. Emmett, he's not a doctor at all. Really? What is he? A patient, just like Miss Patty. Oh, do you think so? For five years now, he's promised to give me a new face. No, Jeff, he's a doctor. 
It says so on his office door. He wouldn't lie. Do you believe a man is what he claims to be? I'm a trusting soul. I try to believe the best in people. It's best to believe the worst. If you believe the worst, then the worst is only half bad at best. And the best is no worse than expected, so it's best to believe the worst. You know, Jeffrey, that's just obscure enough to be profound. What does it mean? It's simple. When a man says he's wise, you call him a fool. But if he says he's a fool, you believe him. Well, only a fool claims to be wise. Exactly, which proves I'm right. Dr. Emmett, he's a fool. It's been five years since the war. And where's his miracle? Some things take a long time to heal, Jeffrey. I can't wait any longer. I'll be 26 soon. And that's ancient. Jeffrey, why don't you forget about your appearance and play anyhow? Don't condemn your audience before you give them a chance to be kind. Look at me. Look at me and tell me that an audience wouldn't be disgusted at the sight of me. You see. I see nothing to hide, Jeffrey. No. Dr. Emmett told you what to no, say. No, he didn't. But I'd listen to him if I were you. Give him a little more time. Five years more. Fair enough. Do you know something? Not a thing. I'm awed only by the magnitude of what I don't know. Well, you see, I wouldn't say this to anyone else, but Hannibal can't really play the violin. <gasps> no! Yes! Well, of course. I'm tone deaf. You know, sometimes I wish I were too. Hmm. Well, you're a sweet boy to pretend, Jeffrey. Poor Hannibal can't play. Yet he does. And I can, but I won't. Don't you find that a little funny? Not very. Ah, Miss Willie! There is no Miss Willie! There's Stop a yelling. rat in the hole! There's a rat as big as a mouse! Ew. And it's going to nibble on your toes! Quick, climb up on a chair! Excuse me. What am I going to do with you, Ferris? You've put me right off my coffee. Now you know there's no rat in the hole. <sighs> but Miss Savage doesn't know that, and I intend on making her living here interesting. <laughs> Thank you, Ferris. You'll be happy to know that I just aged 50 years. 50 years. That puts me well over the 100 mark. Oh, that means we have to throw a birthday party. I'll make the candles. No, you will sit down and drink your coffee. All right. Uh, I think I ate too much today. <coughs> Are you sure there have been no calls or messages for me today? Positive. Then would it be possible to send me to town tonight to get the newspaper? Well, if you'll serve the coffee, I'll go ask Dr. Emmett. Gladly. Here you are, Bingo. Florence hasn't been served yet. Don't stand on manners, Jeff. No. Miss Willie knows how you like your coffee. I'll get my own. Very well. Thank you. You upset? You single me out for attention, Miss Willie. It's unfair and makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> Jeff, it's been such a long night and I'm so tired I simply forgot. You'll have to forgive me. It's okay. I forget too. Mirror, mirror on the wall. <laughs> Who's the fairest of them all? You see what I did there? Ha. Oh, you shouldn't have mirror. It's all right. Keep that to yourself. Cream in your coffee, Ferris. Yes, please. <laughs> Do you think this dress does anything for me? I made it myself. I can tell. It's a sheer delight, Ferris. Sugar? Seven, please. 
You see, I didn't have time to put it to finish it, so I put it together with pins. Now, don't worry, it won't fall down like last time. <laughs> Hannibal? No, thank you. Um, would you like to know of a way to make that exercise a little bit more enjoyable? An enjoyable way of losing weight has yet to be invented. Well, I know of an improvement. All you need is a deck of cards. <gasps> cards. I went to a fortune teller once when I was 14. <laughs> Everything he told me was wrong. After that, I never believed in cards again. Oh, Ferris. <laughs> it really did happen. Throw them up in the air. Uh, why? To lose weight. Now all you have to do is lean over and pick them up again, one by one. Oh, I like that. It's pretty tidy. Thank you. I learned it in a beauty course. Thank you, Mrs. Savage. Now, Miss Savage, wouldn't it be easier, I'm sorry, Florence, to pick them up sideways? <laughs> Much. Man was made all wrong. His stomach should be in back so it doesn't get in the way. And his knees buckle instead of neatly folding. And why should his nose be in front? He only gets in the way when he kisses. Eh. Oh, he's right about that one. Eh. I guess God was in a hurry. Well, Hannibal, eh. what are we doing now? We are losing weight. Well, could we postpone it for a little while? Uh, would you all go upstairs to the study for a few moments? <sighs> I'd like to talk to Mrs. Savage. Uh, Florence. I'd give up my memorial to him. I want to discuss this with you further, but at the moment you have visitors waiting. You may come in now, Senator. I'll be just outside if you want me. My headache's gone. <laughs> How dare you make a fool of me? Why, y you tried to kill me. You knew that old chimney would fall if I just well, started pulling bricks. We're really not a bright family, are we? You must be proud indeed to see the name of Savage held up to ridicule yet again. Did you dig, Titus? Eight FBI men jumped me, pushed my face in the dirt, thought I was planting a bomb. Why didn't you tell the papers the truth? I did sleepwalking, really. You try thinking I'm an excuse with eight men on your chest. Well, she's always ready with a good lie. It was learned today that the senator's mother, a Mrs. Ethel P. Savage, was recently committed to a mental institution for irresponsible behavior. Democratic leaders were quick to point out that this may have a negative effect on her son, the senator. Do you realize what this does to me politically? Makes you a more canard. Dead duck. French, remember? I'll never recover from it. Never. They treated me like a common criminal. <gasps> I was fingerprinted! Oh, that reminds me, Lily Bell. What is inside a stuffed porpoise? Just what do you intend to do now? Are you prepared to listen to my terms? Or would you care to dig in Grant's tomb as well? We are prepared to compromise. If that means you'll see things my way, then <gasps> compromise is the right word. We are prepared to effect your release to somebody for a short period of time. It would look better for us. I'd be willing to give her complete freedom if she'd give up acting and lead a dignified life. Freedom, as Titus can tell you, is the right to make the wrong choice. What would we get? That's what I like about you, Titus. Right to the point. You shall each receive a reasonable yearly allowance. How reasonable? Uh, I shall be generous, but okay. the book of the estate must be given away by my fund. This is complete madness. How do we know that we will have a commitment revoked only to have you not play another trick on us? Where would we be then? Where are you now? Get it over with, Titus. Very well. Right of attraction, Samuel. But I hate having my decisions reversed. When I'm released, I'll keep my promise, but I warn you, don't have me followed. Samuel, wait just a minute. What? I've just found our answer on the cover of this medical journal. What are you talking about? A way to avoid your compromise. 
But first, I have to see Dr. Emmett about it. Are you going to sign the petition or not, Lily Bell? Don't sign anything till I get back. Lily Bell! Lily Bell! Lily Bell! <laughs> okay. What could she have read? God knows. Something to trick you. If you listen to her again, you'll end up without a cent. What'll I do? Sign it. Lily Bell's gotten us into enough trouble already. And be quick. Yours and Samuel's signature will be enough. How many T's are in commitment? Three. Two. Oh. That doesn't look right. Oh, give me this. But give it back! <laughs> All it needs to say is that the, um, that the commitment was ill-advised and that we request release. Yes, really. okay. Will that satisfy you, Mother? It will, when you sign it. Sign it, Samuel. Mm. Oh. Mm. What are you doing? We are signing the letter. Sign it, Lily Bell. It's not necessary. You'll regret this. What right have you to act without our consent? Be quiet and read this. Read what? The article on sodium pentothal. It's, or should I have Dr. Emmett explain? Dr. Emmett, will you please explain to them what sodium pentothal is? It's generally used in cases of shock. It releases tension and removes the patient's inhibitions, making them receptive to suggestion. It's called the truth drug. That's not quite accurate, however. Oh, but under the influence, the patient will speak the truth. Is that not correct? If they answer at all. Oh. Now, do you understand? Did you want me, Doctor? Yes, just a moment. Uh, Dr. Emmett, I'd like you to get and administer some of this drug to my mother Have I any once. rights at all, Doctor? Dr. Emmett, if I may say something, surely you're not going to listen to these people. It'd be a flagrant misuse of science. Dr. Emmett, get my mother some of this drug at once. Mrs. Savage, if I refuse, your guardians are well within their legal rights to remove you from my authority. I'm confident they'll find the means of subjecting you to the influences of sodium pentothal elsewhere. Then let someone else make a step! Oh my God! Ow! What is wrong with you? A hundred million dollars hidden from you does no one any good. Least of all you, it remains an ever-present symptom of psychotic thinking. This is your chance to prove you're all capable of making rational decisions. The intelligent mind recognizes defeat. Fine. But let it be known that I was not forced to my knees by science. I'll tell you where the bonds are. They are... Wait a second, Miss Savage. We've come to the rescue. It's not too late. Oh, my, it's breezy up here. <laughs> we've, we've listened to everything. So shame on you, you, and you. Oh, my, what do they feed you? Doc <laughs> Dr. Emmett. Who are these people? Ow! These are my friends. Weren't you asked to stay upstairs, Hannibal? Yeah. I want to protest, Doctor. What gives you the right to protest, young man? You have no business being here. All right. You're very kind. But I'm afraid Dr. Emmett hasn't much of a choice, as you must have all heard. But, Miss Savage, what will you do? Give them the bonds. I think you've made the right decision. Well, are you going to tell us or not? I'm going to show you. Oh. Ow, okay. We are going to show you. You're not going to hurt him, are you? <gasps> oh, oh. I can't bear to look. My heaven, she's had them the whole time! Oh, oh. oh no! Not the lights! Lights! Tied it! Uh, I get so Just a moment. Who is turn them back on. It's me, just me you oh. idiot! What? Oh, did, oh, did, Doctor, oh. when you turn those lights out? One of our patients. Oh, Mrs. Patty. <laughs> Lily Bell? Lily Bell, oh. She's disappeared. My gracious, what are you doing down there, young lady? <laughs> I was pushed. It wasn't me. The bonds, they're gone. Gone? <gasps> what did you do with them? I put them on the table. Well, then where are they? I don't know. Um, excuse me. 
uh, Senator, <laughs> I think Mrs. Patty probably took them, and you know, during the blackout when, you know. Uh, okay. Miss Willie, get Mrs. Patty. Notify all guards to stop her before she destroys those bonds. This actually makes me feel better. <laughs> <sighs> Darling Mrs. Patty, come on everybody, let's go for a walk. Oh, all right. Okay, now you circle around like this. <laughs> Yes, Miss Wilhelmina. Good, good, good. Well, all the wards have been knocked off, the staff is alerted, and Miss Willie is searching the basement now. But did she find the woman? Not yet. Well, then what was all the good, good, gooding about? We're taking every possible precaution, Senator. That maniac has a hundred million dollars of non-negotiable bonds. If they're not found, they can't be replaced. What will she do with them, Doctor? Well, you see, knowing that Miss Paddy always eats her broccoli first, she'll probably eat the bonds as well. <laughs> uh, I don't know, but we're sure to recover them. It may take some time, though. Years, probably. Why didn't you do anything? You were right there! How was I supposed to know the lights were going out? You know, Quite possible Mrs. Patty didn't take them at all. Of course she did. No one else could you have. You could have. Nonsense. Lily Bell was ten feet from the table. But she's mighty quick when it comes to money. Personally, I think she took them and stuck them in the chest. Why don't you check? You, you didn't take them, did you, Lily Bell? Move, card boy. Ow! There is nothing in this chest. Can't uh. you see she's trying to make uh. us the each other. Well, someone else could have taken them. What about you? You were closest to the table when the lights went out. You were right beside it. Tell us, what have you to say for yourself, sir? Uh, uh, I didn't take it. I don't even like Bond. <laughs> Wait. That's the five of diamonds. Oh. <sighs> that means one of you is going to take it. I don't want it. Dr. Emmett, must we have these people here? Yes, Doctor, get them out of here! Mm. Ferris, out. <laughs> On second thought, no! Don't let anyone leave until he's been searched! Yes, everybody, off with their clothes! Even my kill? No! no! Just, just a moment. <laughs> no. Please, Mrs. Savage, don't make this any more difficult than you already have. And for heaven's sake, do something about this man tossing cards. My nerves are on edge! Hannibal, don't! Oh, here we go again. Hannibal, you can't throw your cards in the air like a fairy princess. Jeff, no. Florence, you can't plant your seed. Oh. I understand you have a lovely tiara. Do you sleep in it? Sit down, you unattractive creature. I've had quite enough. I don't like you. <laughs> Ferris, will you please sit down and be quiet while we wait? <laughs> Anything for you, doctor. I'm sorry, I got nervous. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. 
Well, Mrs. Patty, you have the entire staff searching for you. Stop her! Don't let her get away! I think you'd better join us, Mrs. Patty. We'd like to talk to you. <laughs> now we'll discover where those bonds are. Madam, hand over those bonds. You'd better let me question her, Senator. She's not going to talk to you. Oh, yes, she will. Oh, no, she won't. Well, madam, what have you to say for yourself? I hate everything. Here we go. go. But most of all, I hate revolving doors, custarders, bites, fuzz, fleas, bumblebees, prickly heat, bats, gnats, pills, pots, pans, butts, bladders, worms, germs, pachyderms. And politicians. Ooh. What does she mean? Weren't you listening? Don't you hear me? Don't you understand what I'm saying? No need shouting at her, Senator. She hears you well enough. She's not going to answer you, though. She hasn't answered a question in 20 years. Don't try any tricks on me, madam. Oh, don't make her mad, Titus. She carries a knife. <gasps> she Please, Mrs. Savage. <laughs> That's not a knife. She's hostile, but quite harmless. Now, will you be kind enough to yield the floor to me? Very well, but I want to hear her talk. Oh, so do we all. Mrs. Patty, this is quite important. Now, I want you to nod yes or no to the questions I asked you, all right? Now, did you take some bonds from this table a few minutes ago? She didn't, she didn't. <sighs> Jeff. Oh, oh no. Wouldn't it be so cool if a body fell from the closet because no, of Miss Paddy's no, knife? No, no. Fair, Jeff, fair, that'd be fair, so sit cool. Down. Please sit it'd down. It'd be amazing. Please, please. Mrs. Please, please, Paddy, Jeff, please. it'd be so cool. Uh, look at me. Do you remember turning the lights out? Yes, you do. And do you remember a little bundle of papers on the table? Try to remember. Think. Dr. Emmett, I found them. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. Uh, those are in my custody now. But, Senator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look. That's where my radio tubes went. <laughs> you said you'd found the bonds! I most certainly did not. You know, this restores my faith in magic now. Where did you find them, Miss Willie? In the basement, in the hot air duct leading up to Ferris's room. The hot air duct leading up to Ferris's room? Are you kidding me? All winter long, I've been telling you I'm so cold, I feel like a oh, cold potato in the ground. But no, so I'm. I'm Dr. Emmett, I hold you personally responsible for this fiasco. Just what would you have me do, Senator? Search the woman. She may have them on her person. I'm afraid that's going to present a problem. Well, then search everyone else while we concentrate on making her talk. Very well. Will you take Mrs. Savage to her room and search her, please? No, 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 no. Miss Woolley, take me. I'm the youngest. My room's a clinic. Right. I clean three times a month, Harris, two times a week. Walking. Except when there's a keep rat walking, in the hall. I have walking. to watch out for my toes. My toes are the most important part of my body. Mrs. Patty, wouldn't you like to save us a whole lot of trouble? Dr. Emmett, haven't you some sort of threat you resort to around here? I don't threaten my patients. Please, Mrs. Patty, let go of the radio. What are you doing? The truth drug. The truth drug. That's why we'll make her Ow. talk. No, no, it's it's out of the question. I'd, I'd have to have a guardian's consent. Well, we'll get it. Who is her guardian? Her husband. Well, where is he? Japan. Perfect. In his absence, haven't you the authority to act? We've no proof she even took them yet. I still think Lily Bell's your girl. Will you stop saying that? <laughs> Dr. Emmett. Yes? Since Miss Savage can't have her bonds anyhow, I think it can be of help to you. Yes? You see, Miss Patty, she didn't take the bonds. And how do you know? Because I did! <laughs> Dr. Emmett, I knew it! These people are lying to us! Hand over those bonds, young man. I can't. Jeffrey, did you take the bonds? Yes, sir. Then where did you put them? I've searched Ferris, Doctor. He doesn't have them. Well, I, uh, I put them out the window. Oh! <gasps> God's life! Quickly, Titus! We'll watch from the window! Stop! Parcheesi! The Royal Game of India! Jeff, you couldn't have thrown them out the window. The window's closed. Oh. What did you mean by misleading us, young man? Let go of him! Oh! oh. He said he took the bonds. He didn't, and I happen to know that he didn't. Well, how do you happen to know that? That is none of your concern. How do you know, Miss Willie? Because I had my arms around Jeff when the lights went out. I wanted to protect him during all the confusion. Thank you. No, 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 no. Ooh. I took the bonds. No one else. Emmett, Miss Willie, there's a fire upstairs. A fire with flames this high. 
Ferris, come in and sit quietly, Dr. please. Emmy, Dr. Emmy, you have to believe me. There's a fire. Where? In the bathtub. Ferris, sit down. Dr. Emmy, you have to believe now. me. Now. I can't sit down. I'm full of pins. Jeffrey, if you did take the bonds, where did you put them? He didn't take them. I told you. Of course he didn't. If anyone should know, I should. Now I suppose you took them. I confess everything. I'm just letting you know there's a fire upstairs. There's a conspiracy down here. Where are they, Florence? I won't tell you. Dr. Emmett, these people are trying to deceive us. Your Honor, I've committed this theft with the full knowledge of the stigma involved. Something's burning upstairs. <laughs> you should probably check her, you know? Greedy little man. Will you take Florence through a room and search her? I promise I won't tell Miss Savage, even if they cut all my hair off. The fire is going to burn your hair off if you don't. <laughs> it's a waste of time to search dear Florence. Now I suppose you took them. No, but I know who did. Who and did, I Hannibal? know a fire when I see one. I'm just saying it's a fire. Red. Well, oh. it wasn't Mrs. Patty. Well, who was it then? It wasn't Florence either. I don't want to know who it wasn't. I want to know who was it. Is that good grammar? <laughs> well, if you ask a Mohemian what God is, he'd tell you all the things that he isn't. It's better telling them what he is. And one of the things he isn't is, he isn't on your side. Hannibal. Oh, fiddle. Let the house burn down. It's Hannibal, burn. if you know who took the bonds, will you tell us? Well, I know it was a woman that pushed me, and it wasn't Mrs. Patty. How do you know it was a woman? Really, Titus? How do you know it wasn't Mrs. Patty? She doesn't use perfume. <gasps> you want to know who bathes in it? <gasps> you want to know who wasn't near the table? Oh, me! No! Oh, my. Why, can you identify the scent? <sighs> yes. Well, I use gardenia. What do you use, Ferris? I, I don't use anything. It's all natural. <laughs> Hannibal, smell lily bell. Mm -hmm. Titus, I won't tolerate this. They're making fools of us for their own amusement. Get away from me! <laughs> smell anything, Hannibal? Yes. What? Smoke. <laughs> My word, I smell it too. It's about time. Dr. Emmett, there was a fire in Mrs. Patty's bathtub. In the... in the bathtub? <laughs> I, I don't think I'm going to speak to anyone right now. <laughs> I'm afraid it's the bonds, or at least what's left of them. <gasps> oh, no! Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> why, why, there's no telling what these are. <laughs> Mrs. Patty, did you take those bonds to your room and set fire to them? Senator, here's a piece of something that didn't burn. Can you tell me what it is? It's the burnt end of a half a million dollar bond. Uh, are you sure? Mrs. Savage, could you identify this? Well, the treasure hunt is over. It's all that's left of 100 million dollars. Uh, uh, excuse me, but I think if I told a lie, one of you would have believed me. Oh. <laughs> yes, Ferris, I'm sorry. I should have believed you anyhow. Sorry. There must be some way of having them replaced, Senator. Well, there isn't. They just can't be gone. They just can't. You stupid, useless, miserable. You miserable, <gasps> useless, unattractive creature. Leave her you have any idea what you cost us? I've had enough of you bullying my patients. Now will you please be so kind as to leave at once. What about the bird piece? Is it worth anything? Nothing. I hold you personally responsible for this fiasco, doctor. Goddess? I don't know how to be poor. It's all right, Lily Bell. We'll survive it. We always have. After all, I am still senator. Lily Bell, I never intended it to end like this, believe me. Take me home, Titus. Please. Titus.
tried it? Yes. What happens to me? Oh, you have nothing to fear, Mother. We would never allow you to be sent to a public institution. <sighs> we are savages! <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, we are cloisters. And goodbye. We say goodbye to people we don't want to see again. Don't cry, Mrs. Patty. I'm sure you hate tears, too. You know, maybe she thinks her tub is cracked. Here you go, Miss Patty. Even the knife is yours. Did you think you could change them, Mrs. Savage? No one changes people. One makes changes people learn to accept. I had hoped to make them look like fools so they might look with understanding on the fools of good heart. And who are the fools of good heart? I'd say those who gamble on people and invest in kindness. Those who doubt that position means privilege or that manners mean morals. And, of course, the rebels with no fear of failure. That makes a lot of sense. And does that justify my staying here? Would you like to leave? Oh, they would never let me leave. They have no say about it. No patient's commitment is final until I have made my decision, and I see no valid reason for your remaining. Does that mean that I'm free? Well, I could release you on my own authority at once. But let me check with the state medical examiner, then I'll let you know definitely. I think I'll go pack your bags. We can always unpack again. You, you hate us? Don't say that, Ferris. You want to leave. I have to. Is someone expecting you? No. Does someone need you? No. Well, I haven't got time to get my going away present. I mean, I could still look. It won't be much, but it'll be something. I'll go look. I'd like to see what I could find for you, too. Now, Miss Savage, you can't leave. You. Or else you won't get anything. <laughs> I have something I just thought of. Perfect. We could, we could all find something. I'll try to get you something useless. I detest practical gifts. Uh, um, well, uh, I don't have an, anything in my room I can give you, Mrs. Savage, but <laughs> I do have something I prize, my, my class ring. Inside it, it says, let there be light. <sighs> something Mrs. Patty wouldn't like. Hannibal, I couldn't take the ring off your finger. <laughs> no, 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 but I insist. Um, it has no value as gold goes, but as blood goes, it's a statistical treasure. <laughs> um, <laughs> for the past um, 10 years, my, uh, every two minutes, my blood has pumped, uh, my finger has pumped blood through this ring. So if you um, <laughs> add that all up, that's 100,000 gallons of blood. It's too much, Hannibal. <laughs> I, 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 no, it's okay. It's just, I can't seem to get it off. It's all right, Hannibal. I appreciate the offer, the sentiment, and the statistics. <laughs> I, I guess my fingers got um, too chubby on each side of the ring. It's all right, Hannibal. You've had it so long, it's become a part of you. I'm all out of breath. Here, feel, feel my heart. Oh my goodness, Ferris. But I, I found something. Now, I, I hope you didn't expect much, because then you won't be disappointed. I won't be disappointed, Ferris. Hannibal, you can feel my heart, too. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> that's 104 beats a minute, uh, Ferris. 
yeah, but you see, it's a napkin, but it's not like any other napkin. It doesn't blot or smear like the others, so it's unique. And it even has the cloisters on it, so you could remember us. Thank you, Ferris. I'll take it with me whenever I'm invited out. Ferris found something first. What did he give you? A handmade napkin. Then it fits perfectly with my present. It's practical after all. I hope you don't mind. What is it? Uh, a salt shaker. And full of salt, too. It's engraved. It says the cloisters on it. Is it sterling? No, oh, Ferris, I wouldn't dream of giving Mrs. Savage anything that wasn't sterling. Oh, but it's Denton. Dents give it an antique character. Indeed they do. Well, I'm not going to say goodbye. Because the last time I said goodbye, my mother never came back. So someone else could say it. You didn't expect us to say goodbye, did you? I didn't even expect a salt shaker. Well? How do you do, Mrs. Savage? We've been expecting you. We've been waiting for you to come. Make yourself at home, please. Oh, I forgot. John Thomas asked me to give you something. He would have delivered it himself, but he was afraid you'd catch the measles. Come, Fierce, let's pretend it's garden hour. Yes, let's pretend. Miss Savage, you have perfect occlusion. And take an umbrella. Because it's raining outside. Um, so uh, what, what did you bring, Jeff? Just a book but I do hope that you enjoy it. Um, what, what is it? The Lifespan of the Ape. Do you know I've never read it? I was lucky, wasn't I? I'm going to read it tonight. Oh, Mrs. Patty, uh, I thought you'd forgotten us. What did you bring, Miss Patty? A uh, genuine mother of pearl button. I'm going to sew it on at once. I think it's intended to make an eye for the bear. Bless your angry heart, Mrs. Patty. He's hated having only one eye. I hate everything in the world. I hate everything in the world. I hate everything in the world but you. And I love you. And I wish you wouldn't leave us. Well, she, she just spoke. We knew it all along, that she loved you. Uh, well, um, <laughs> um, Jeff, um, um, we should uh, check on um, Ferris and Florence and see how they're doing. It, it's a beautiful night. Um, <coughs> uh, Mrs. Savage, watch out tonight. Um, don't. Don't break your neck. You have a good head on your shoulder, Miss Savage. everything. Oh, there you are, Mrs. Savage. 
Here's your $850 hat. <coughs> My beautiful and foolish hat. You know, I think you've been wearing it wrong this whole time. You know, I think I have. Feels good to be straightened out. Where did everybody go? They gave me going away presents and then refused to say goodbye. I bet I can guess what they gave you. No, you can't. Mrs. Patty gave me an eye with which to see myself. Florence, a grain of salt to take with what I see. That's good. And Ferris? A memory of excitement. Well, I'm afraid to most he wouldn't seem quite the excitable gentleman. Well, he wears his imagination with great strength. And Jeff? The Book of Job. Nothing from Hannibal. <laughs> I'd say he gave me an appreciation of music I never had before. <laughs> well, I have something for you too. You behave yourself. Oh, no, no, it's not much. Well, here you are. My bonds. Well, except for one I had to burn with the newspapers to make it look convincing. Where did you find these? <laughs> I didn't find them. I took them when the lights went out. Don't tell me you're a kleptomaniac. Oh, no, no, no. It was too quick to think. What bothered me is that after I took them, I sort of toyed with the idea of keeping them. Well, that's a normal impulse, but what stopped you? What Jeff might have felt. Oh, you should get out of here. That kind of thinking isn't good for you. Oh, oh, no, no, no. No, surely you knew Jeff was my husband, didn't you? I certainly did not. <laughs> well, he is. But do, do, you, do you know why I didn't take any of that money? Pure selfishness. I want to be here when he recovers. I want to be the one to get him through all of this. Surely you understand that. The only thing I don't understand is how I could have ever felt so sorry for myself. Isn't there something about a no fool like a you know what? Something, but I don't think that applies to you. Does anyone else know about these? I told Dr. Emmett. Well, whether you want it or not, you're both going to receive a fair share. I talked to the medical examiner. Yes? There's a station wagon outside ready to take you wherever you want to go. We'll take your bags outside to the car, please. Goodbye, Mrs. Savage. I have some papers for you to sign, then you're <coughs> free to leave. I must be out of my mind, really, but... I don't want to go. You mean you'd prefer to leave tomorrow? No, I don't think I want to leave at all. But why... Why do you want to stay? Suddenly I'm weary. I would like to rest. I would like to be relieved of decision. <coughs> I would like to be protected against uncertainty and accident. And I would like close my eyes at night and know that there are walls to guard my sleep. But the peace you find here is like <coughs> the moon reflected on a dark lake. Strike the surface and you destroy it. Is that the kind of peace you want? I want what everyone wants. To want nothing. These people have found contentment. How would you know? I have eyes to see. So does Jeffrey. But he only sees what he wants to see. An excuse for not facing the future. Does Florence see that her child was taken from her? Does Ferris see that he's stuck in his childhood? No, they found refuge in an eggshell world where you don't belong. For you see yourself clearly, I'm sure. Then where do I belong? In the world you can best serve. The impulse to live your life with courage was right. Go ahead with your memorial fund and don't be betrayed by the illusion of contentment. The door's open for you. Make peace with your loneliness.
Oh. Mrs. Savage, you're still here. I thought of something I could give you. Oh, Hannibal, not your violin. Oh, no, you couldn't play it. <laughs> but I can give you a song, and with this song, you can take it anywhere. <laughs> and this is your song.
coming. It was just a fun show to do, and um, and there's even more flowers coming out here, so I'm sure we got a plan for that. No, I'm not talking. I'll take the mic from you now. <laughs> <laughs> calm down, calm down. All right, so if I could get Blake up here real quick to help us. Um, so, where is he? Blake, where are you at? I need you. Uh, <laughs> there you are. So, it's not only the actors that put in, like, the hard work to do everything. It's also a lot of people backstage and, I mean, the people you're sitting with that you don't even see and the people behind you. So, I want to give it to uh, Joseph Brazel, who played Jeff here, to thank everyone. Yeah. So, um, we just want to have a certain thank you to all the parents who helped. Uh, just, could you raise your hand if you helped in any way? Yeah, just so that you can be recognized. Yeah. Uh, it's all these amazing people that when they put their hard work together, we can have a fantastic performance that we did tonight uh, just come to life as it did. Um, so, yeah. So we have individual roses to the people that helped. Um, so if we call your name, just come out here and it would be nice. Don't be shy. It's, we're, all, we're all loving each other here. Um, the individuals are those. That's the bouquet. So, yeah. Uh, all right, so can we call um, Kelsey? Kelsey Egan, can we call her out? Um, Kelsey basically helped with uh, props and everything. She made sure that all the props were where they needed to be. Um, she worked hard, and it was really, like, we really appreciate it. Can we get um, Evelyn? Evelyn, where you at? Evelyn G? Where, you, where is she? Oh, she's right there. She's back there. Uh, basically, Evelyn took care of everything backstage, as in making it organized. Uh, she also took care of basically, you know, a lot of stuff. She did really good. We're proud of her. <laughs> um, is Kara here? Kara Cordell? Kara Cordell? Kara? There she is. So if you don't know, Kara, she's an alumni, actually. Uh, she got all the best roles last year, and she basically was in charge of makeup. Uh, she was, she's an amazing actress. Um, can we also call Yvette? Where's Yvette? She's right there. So um, Yvette basically took care of all the costumes. Every costume that each character had, she made sure it was right there in its place. Um, it was pretty cool, actually. It was impressive. Um, so can we call Aurora out here as well? Aurora, where you at? 